Why is the SEC reviewing its communication with JP Morgan about Ripple? By the way, will Ripple still win the lawsuit despite Judge Torres not accepting one of Ripple's arguments? Finally, are we going to see an appeal from the SEC if Ripple wins? Hello everyone and welcome to our channel, where we talk about the latest updates on XRP and the cryptocurrency world in general. If this is your first time watching one of our videos, we happily send you a special welcome. We invite you to hit on the notification bell so you never miss another video. We are announcing that this channel has a giveaway of 200 XRP. To stand the chance of participating, all you have to do is simply subscribe to the channel, like this video and comment with the hashtag XRP, and the winner will be announced on the 15th of April. The XRP price suddenly turned green amid a sea of red in crypto prices as positive expectations remained. At the time of writing, XRP was up 2.1% in the last 24 hours at 50 cents, the only asset in green among the top 10 coins, save for stable coins. The crypto market traded in red as investors anticipated Friday's non-farm payrolls report for further signs of the Fed's monetary policy tightening. Bitcoin was marginally down to trade below the $28,000 mark, while Dogecoin tumbled down 10% after Twitter stopped using the cryptocurrency's mascot as its logo. As reported, XRP just made its first MA crossing in 2023, which is the Golden Cross. A bull flag, which is a continuation pattern that looks like a downward sloping channel or rectangle denoted by two parallel trend lines, was also cited on its daily chart. Traders should now pay attention to bulls gaining control to push another fresh rally. Ashley Prosper, an XRP community member who filed a Freedom of Information Act request last year demanding communications between SEC and JP Morgan involving Ripple, has updated XRP enthusiasts about recent progress. In a recent tweet, Prosper said the SEC had received the search results and is currently reviewing the documents. However, the securities regulator noted that a large number of the documents required confidential treatment. Based on our initial review of the record, it appears that a large portion of the records will require that we engage in the CT substantiation process, which involves records for which confidential treatment was requested at the time of their submission, an excerpt of the email read. The Securities and Exchange Commission added that it will require an additional 60 days to the review time in order to engage in this type of consultation. It is noteworthy that Prosper filed the FOIA request in August 2022, seeking disclosure of any communications between the SEC and JP Morgan about Ripple. Like several XRP community members, Prosper alleges that some private companies influenced the SEC's decision to go after Ripple in December 2020. Prosper filed the FOIA request because he believes the ongoing Ripple lawsuit started with communications between JP Morgan and the SEC. However, all efforts to have the SEC release the documents have yielded no positive results. In March, Prosper notified members of the XRP community that the SEC postponed the release of the document to the end of March. He disclosed that he had contacted FOIA advocates to take legal action against the SEC over its continued delay. Reacting to the development, famous crypto influencer Digital Asset Investors said the JP Morgan emails might be bigger than Hinman's. For context, Hinman's emails contain SEC internal communications that resulted in the 2018 controversial William Hinman speech, where the former SEC exec declared Ethereum and Bitcoin as non-securities. The regulators tried not to surrender the documents. However, after 18 months and six separate bench orders, the SEC handed the documents to Ripple last year. Notably, the public does not know the contents of the documents to date, as the SEC continues to insist on keeping them sealed. Please, do not forget to subscribe to our channel and also hit that notification bell to be the first person to get more updates about the latest happenings as regards to XRP. As the crypto community continues to anticipate Ripple vs. SEC summary judgment, crypto law founder attorney John Deaton has identified one of the company's arguments that may not appeal to the judge in a podcast with Thinking Crypto. In Ripple's summary judgment motion, the company argued that if the SEC's case theory is granted, the court will indirectly accept that there can be an investment contract without a contract. Commenting on the case, attorney Deaton said the argument by Ripple is only stronger in the Second Circuit than in the First, Fifth, and Ninth Circuits. The crypto law founder noted that other courts outside the Second Circuit had found an investment contract without an underlying one. He pointed out that some judges have found an investment contract from a company's brochure to investors that made promises. 
It bears mentioning that the leading Silicon Valley blockchain company sent a brochure to about 100 potential investors in 2014. According to attorney Deaton, Judge Torres could find Ripple's approach as an offering. Although Ripple argued that the transaction did not constitute an investment contract as there was no underlying contract, Deaton asserted that Judge Torres might not buy the argument. He, however, thinks the Supreme Court will accept the argument. Ripple's argument is that that is not enough because there is no underlying contract. I don't see Judge Torres buying that argument, although I see the Supreme Court accepting it. Despite commending the argument, he believes Judge Torres will not accept it just like other judges at her level had done in the past. I think they're going to lose that argument with her. I hope I'm wrong, Deaton was quoted as saying. Attorney Deaton thinks Judge Torres' summary judgment will favor Ripple. Deaton explained that Ripple would win the lawsuit because the SEC's theory is too broad. So if I had to pick one winner, if you said who's going to win, an outright win, SEC or Ripple, I would pick Ripple unopposed. A lot of people don't agree with me, but I'd pick Ripple because the SEC's theory is too overbroad, he said. Meanwhile, Deaton speculated that Judge Torres' summary judgment ruling might come before May 6th. He added that it is also possible for the ruling to delay until June 1st, as it is difficult to predict. So I've been telling people that somewhere between March 6th and May 6th, we'll get the ruling, right? It could be today while we're talking, it could be filed, or it could be, you know, May 6th. Now, is it possible that it could go to June 1st? It's possible, right? We don't know, he said. For Deaton, the only people who can correctly predict the ruling date are Judge Torres staff and court clerks who helped her get research materials. Now to our big question of the day, are we going to see an appeal from the SEC if Ripple wins? Please, do not forget to subscribe to our channel and also hit that notification bell to be the first person to get more updates about the latest happenings as regards to XRP. With the Ripple vs. SEC summary judgment expected to come anytime soon, many crypto stakeholders are commenting on the possible action the parties may take if the judge doesn't rule in their favor. Notably, Ripple has already disclosed plans to appeal the decision in the Second Circuit if Judge Annalisa Torres rules in favor of the SEC. However, the SEC has yet to reveal its next line of action if Ripple wins. The SEC's silence has recently sparked a debate among crypto community members. While some crypto enthusiasts expect the SEC to appeal the decision if it loses, others think the regulator won't appeal. Interestingly, attorney Jeremy Hogan, a partner at Hogan & Hogan Law Firm, is among those who believe the SEC will not appeal the decision. Attorney Hogan made this known in a recent interview with 3T Warrior Academy. According to Hogan, the SEC will not appeal any unfavorable decision from Judge Torres because the move is of no benefit to the regulator. He added that the SEC risks setting a binding precedent if the Second Circuit of the Appellate Court still rules against the Commission. If the judge rules in Ripple's favor, I do not think the SEC is going to appeal. The reason I say that is because there is no benefit to the SEC to appeal because if the case goes to the Second Circuit in the Appellate Court and the Second Circuit rules against the SEC, now that becomes a binding precedent. He added that a ruling against the SEC at the Second Circuit would affect the regulator's chances of winning other cases against crypto companies. I'm 90% sure this is what they will do. When they lose, there won't be an appeal because they don't want to mess up their whole agenda here and enforce these regulations against the crypto space, said Hogan. In contrast, Attorney Hogan asserted that Ripple would appeal the decision to the Second Circuit and even the Supreme Court if it loses the lawsuit. So we come to the end of this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, Please make sure you like the video, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. This really helps me with the YouTube algorithm. Also, you can help enlighten others just like you have been enlightened by sharing this video to as many people as possible. Let's get this news everywhere guys. If you are a true cryptocurrency fan, don't miss any of our content. See you tomorrow to talk about the latest news that concerns us all as a community.